Ephraim Christ. Happy Sunday. We welcome to the 32nd Sunday in the Ordinary Time. Yes, see. Today's liturgy invites us to ponder life after death as we come close to the end of the liturgical season. Life after death is itself God's own harvest of the elect who will now share in the everlasting happiness promised by the Lord. They will be counted worthy to live forever with him who is not the God of the dead but of the living. Our first reading today is taken from the second book of Maccabees, chapter 7, verses 1 to 2, and verses 9 to 14. The reading tells us of the martyrdom of the seven Maccabean brothers and their mother, who were arrested, tortured, but refused to eat pork for their faith in God and their hope in another life. For their faith, one by one, each of the brothers and their mother suffered martyrdom in the hands of this oppressive regime. For each of them, death was preferable to abandoning their religion or breaking God's law. As the fourth brother dies, he speaks of his hope of being raised from the dead. For him, one cannot but choose to die at the hands of men and to cherish the hope that God gives of being raised again by him. The books of Maccabees report great suffering among the Jewish people, but also of prayers for the dead. Sacrifices and prayers were offered for those who died in the hope of being raised again by God. The Gospel is taken from Luke chapter 20 verses 27 to 38. The Sadducees were religious leaders and temple priests belonging to the upper class of the society. They controlled the temple and its offerings and sacrifices. Unlike the Pharisees, they did not believe in the resurrection. Instead, they held that when a person dies, he or she goes to Sheol, an immense tomb, a place of abandonment. This idea leaves nothing more than hopelessness. They tried to ridicule the teaching on the resurrection by quoting the Mosaic law on marriage. They said, Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, having a wife but no children, the man must take the wife and raise up children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers, all seven left no children and died. In the resurrection, whose wife will the woman be? In most cultures, widows belong to the lowest class of the society. If they have no means of survival on their own, life can even be more difficult. In some cultures, there are practices to protect widows, not only from loneliness and grief arising from the deaths of their loved ones, but also to give them a sense of belonging in the society. One of such practices is to marry off a widow to a sibling of her late husband so that her welfare remains a duty of the family. Moses gave instruction to that effect. But the law which was made to protect a childless widow so that she may not be molested or left lonely had been turned into a justification for unbelief in life after death. Jesus on response to them is that marriage belongs to this world only because there is no more death and they now live like angels. Jesus went further by quoting the words of God to Moses from the burning bush as a proof of the fact that the dead shall arise because all are alive with God, including all those who have died. He believed in the Christian doctrine of the resurrection. It has to do with faith. 
we are assured by Jesus that if we live according to his will here on earth, we shall have a place with God at the resurrection. If not, there is punishment for those who choose to live in the darkness of the world. The resurrection then is the final test of our faith. We either accept it or reject it as the eternal harvest of the blessed to the beatific inheritance. Let us pray. God, you will that all might be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Grant eternal life to the dead and give us the grace to prepare for a happy death. Amen. The Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.